Maybe there is something in the audio file air rights now because there seems to have been a lot of new subwoofers released lately. And there seems to be a fascination with micro subwoofers. And you know what? A lot of us have had to live with micro things in our lives for a very long time. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. See, I'm talking about micro bank balances and waistlines, not what you're thinking about. But when Rel Acoustics approached me and asked me if I'd be interested to take a look at one of their brand new subwoofers, initially I was a little bit hesitant, but once they explained to me what they were all about, I really got quite excited. And this is one of Rel's new TX range of subwoofers, where the X stands for extra. All jokes aside, I was actually really quite honored to be offered the opportunity to take a look at the brand new T9X, which is the flagship subwoofer from Rel's new TX range. The TX range of subwoofers will replace Rel's current TI range of subwoofers. So that will probably give some of you an idea of where the TX is going to fit into Rel's full product line. Most of you are probably aware that I do Dirac Live calibrations as a service to some of you guys and to other customers. And that means I get to listen to, look at, measure, test, and really push the performance of a lot of different subwoofers. And one of the subwoofers that stood out to me over the last year has been RHEL's Series S. 812 and it stands out to me because it can do what rail subwoofers are famous for it can be fast over high level and it's got quite a, a harmonically rich natural sound which i really like but on top of that it can also give you big output and it can be really ass kicking for home cinema and the first time i experienced this was at a direct live calibration for a customer who has a huge room and i was amazed that just two 812s and one 510 was not only able to fully pressurize this huge room, but they was able to, after I set them up, to still deliver a really ass kicking home cinema performance and still deliver very good musical performance, even in this huge, great big room. And the 812 really earned my respect that day. But that is why I was really excited and interested in the new TX range of subwoofers because Rel told me that they've been completely redesigned and improved to better match the performance of the Series S subwoofers just at a more affordable price point. This is the T9X, the flagship, and it's going to cost £1,299. Then there is the T7X, which will cost £999, and the T5X, which will cost £649. Now, the astute among you will notice that there is a price increase with the T9X over the T9i, the outgoing model, of about 30%. So just for reference, the T9X, as I say, cost £1,299, and the T9i cost £999. So for 30% more, we should expect extra. And that is where the X comes from with this new range, the X, according to REL, stands for extra. The first thing that stood out to me with the T9X was its general shape. It seems quite low to the ground, and deep rather than it is tall. And Rel say that is all by design. And they say it gives the T9X a more stealth-like appearance. Very interestingly, they also say that the T9X is actually a larger cabinet. It's a bigger subwoofer than the T9i. Not that you can tell. Slightly lower, deeper design actually makes the subwoofer less imposing. It makes it more room friendly, which is going to be good news to many wives out there. Rail have updated and improved the finish quality on the new TX subwoofers to better match the finish quality and overall look of their more recent subwoofers like the Siri S. 
I really like it with the grill off so we can see the speaker driver going commando. Something I found really quite interesting, Rail told me when they designed these new TX subwoofers, they started with the feet. So all of the TX range of subwoofers have brand new feet and they're all different sizes and masses based around the overall size and mass of the subwoofer. Rail also told me that all of their subwoofers have different sizes and masses of feet to be part of a full acoustical design. And I'm sure most of you are more interested in the fact that these new TX subwoofers have brand new fiber alloy drivers. As in the T9X, there is a 10 inch long throw driver that is actively driven, the one you can see here at the front. And there is also a brand new 10 inch passive radiator. Now, Rel didn't give me any more details about the new fiber alloy drivers. You know, to say what's better about them than the old ones, other than to say that they are a more nimble material, which means they are faster and that they recover quicker. I put this T9X under the music hammer. I was really quite impressed by how linear and pistonic its motion was. The active driver is being driven by a brand new Class AB amplifier, which Rel say is more powerful than the amplifier that's in the T9I. And they say it's conservatively rated to 300 watts based on the measurement system and test system that they use. But by all accounts, if they use the less stringent measurement system, well, then they could rate it up to about 600 watts, but I can't confirm that because I haven't done the measurements myself. Another new thing to talk about is the curved cabinet. Hopefully you can see there the curved sides of the cabinet, which again, just makes the overall look nicer, makes the subwoofer more appealing, more domestic friendly, easier to get past the wife. But Rail have also said that they put a lot of effort into getting the design of the cabinet just right to handle the increased pressure created by the improved drivers and the more powerful amplifier. One last new, in a way, thing to talk about. On top, you can see the Rail logo. And Rail design, Really the logos as part of, again, the four acoustical designs. Each logo is actually part of a top plate design with each top plate being a different size, thickness and mass. So there is a lot that is new here, yet there's still a lot that is very familiar, such as the amplifier plate, the way that all works, the high level connections and more. But while we are talking about new, we are talking about new feet a new cabinet, new drivers, new amplifier, new logo top plate design. So everything's new and Rail say it's all new and improved. But what is the performance like? Well, I was only able to test out the T9X for music. I wasn't able to test it for its home cinema performance purely because of time constraints and system constraints. And I also wasn't able to place it in the normal spot I would in my room, but I was still very impressed by the base quantity and quality from the T9X. Now, naturally, I did a custom direct live calibration. I integrated it with some Bowers and Wilkins 705 signature speakers and combined with them, integrated well, I found that it was giving me a bass performance very similar to what I would expect from the Kef reference speakers, Kef reference free speakers that I owned for a very long period of time. So, you know, a bass that's very similar to 10 and a half thousand pound speakers. I think that's very impressive. The bass from the T9X is fast, it's nimble, it's tight, it's agile, and it was able to dig deeper than what I would normally get from the Kef reference. Integrating a subwoofer with a pair of stand mount speakers might seem like a trivial thing, but it's actually not, especially with speakers like the Bowers and Wilkins Signature because they are very fast and nimble speakers. And I was pairing them from the Lima Tucana two anniversary amplifier, which is a fast, very lively and dynamic sounded amplifier. So the T9X had its work cut out, but as I say, was really impressed in the main by the bass quality, and quantity it was delivering. I was able to set it up to deliver a really punchy and full bass with excellent bass extension. So more extension than I would normally get from you know, any type of even large speakers in my room. And I did do some sound recordings actually to you know try and give you an AB demonstration. But when I've listened back to them, I think maybe the deep bass output was probably putting my professional recording equipment on the limit actually of what it can capture from bass. So I'll see if I can salvage some, some of the recordings that I've done to maybe give you a sound demonstration video to show you about you know, how the T9X was sounding for me. But if you don't see it, 
uh, that will be the only reason why. Now I'm definitely very critical when it comes to base quality and quantity, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to you know getting base just right. So for me, probably the biggest compliment that I can pay the T9X is that for music, it was delivering a non-subwoofer-like bass experience, a more speaker-like bass experience, which is in a way is a bit of a backwards compliment, but it's probably the best compliment that you can pay a subwoofer that's designed with music in mind. So definitely a speaker-like bass, but with more bass authority, extension, and weight to it, like what you would expect from a subwoofer. And that was only from just one. I think had I had two T9X, and had they been in the more usual spy in the room they would normally go, I think I would have got even better performance and experience from, you know, two T9X. But one on its own was still delivering, you know, very good bass output and very tight, controlled, and mostly transparent bass. There are a couple of things definitely to consider here. Firstly, I wasn't able to test the T9X for home cinema, so this is definitely not a full review of the subwoofer. And around this kind of money, we can buy 15 inch 1000 watt subwoofers from REL with their Predator subwoofers that I happen to have four in the room now. So one would think that a 15 inch 1000 watt subwoofer would be more ass kicking for home cinema than a conservatively rated 300 watt double 10. But you know what, when I looked at the measurements from the T9X, it was giving me you know, a big output of bass in my room with you know big output down into the 20s of Hertz. That is really very impressive. Obviously that is with some room gain. There is one potential big negative, depending on how you look at it, with the new TX range of subwoofers from REL, and that is that they are not designed to be stacked, which almost feels criminal because I think the shape of the new TX range being a bit lower and a bit deeper, they seem primed to me to stack them up. It's kind of, you know, three high. So that does mean that if you want, you know, Siri ass kicking bass from a stack of subwoofers, then the Siri S range of subwoofers from REL is still where it's at, but let me know down in the comments section if you are excited about the TX range of subwoofers where the X stands for excellent video. See what I did there. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already, of course you have. And I'll see you soon. Take care, thanks, bye.